So now that the bird is properly set up to be our default pawn, we are gonna go and start actually making the bird do things. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the bird jump. So to go ahead and do that, we will have to go back into C++. So if you don't have your coding open right now, you can just go back into your C++ classes, double click, and then with your code back up, we are basically going to set up and prepare for some sort of jump. Now, the bird being able to jump is not something I want anyone else to be able to have access to. And as such, we are going to make a new uh, function called jump. So now that we've gone ahead and created it within the header file, we have committed to making this within C++. So we're gonna click on this little wrench here to create the definition nice and easily within the CPP file. Now what's annoying about this approach is it does make the CPP file kind of interrupt whatever you're doing on this page. So I just always use it to add the signature and then I close out the page and then I'll you know, manually go into my C++ file just so I don't get confused. But from here we can then see that we do have a jump function. So now that we've got some sort of jump ready to go within our code, we're going to take the next step which is setting up some sort of action mapping. Now to set up our action mapping, we're gonna go back into Unreal and we are going to go edit, project settings, and then within our project settings, we are going to find something here called input. Now within input, we can adjust both action and axis mappings. In this case, these are all the default ones that come with the project that we started with. And we do already have some sort of jump set up as an action within this project. If I hit this little drop down here, we can see that jump is currently set to fire whenever the space bar is pressed or whenever the gamepad button is pressed. So this is good. If I ever wanted to change this or add another mapping to this, I could add a third input type by taking this little plus button here. Or if I did not want this gamepad to be here because I hate gamepads, I can remove it by hitting the trash button. But that being said, now that we know that jump is called jump, we're going to be able to access this action mapping within code. The way that we're going to do that is we are going to bind that action to a specific function using a player input component. And we're going to do that within this function here, setting up our player input component. So inside this function, I'm going to add a line of code. We're going to take our player input component and we are going to call a method that it has called bind action. So now if I open up some parentheses here, the first thing we have to do is we're going to call the specific action that we're going to bind. We have to remember the exact way that it's spelt within our action mapping in order for this to be possible, but luckily jump is relatively easy to spell. Now after we have that all set up, we're going to go and we're going to say that we want this to happen every single time that it's pressed down. So every single time that a jump button is pressed, we want this object to fire some sort of function. Now in order for us to call a function here, we're going to need to put the little and value, and then we're going to call what we are, and then we're going to put in the function that we created to be called. So now this line of code is saying our player input component is going to take the action called jump and whenever the jump action is pressed on, this is going to jump. And then basically whenever we have the jump happen, the jump method that we created is going to fire. Now to show this off, we're going to basically log something that says we've pressed the jump button. So in order to do that, we are going to use something called UE log. UE log is a relatively simple function that requires a few different things to make it look proper. The first thing we have to add is something called log temp. This means it's temporary log from what I can find online. <laughs> the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the verbosity or how bad do you want it to yell at you? In this case, I usually do warning whenever I'm doing temp logs because I like it to be yellow and scream at me, but not the amount of screaming that would come by putting error. And then finally, we're gonna put what we actually want to send out to the log, and it's just going to be a simple text field here where I'm just gonna say, hi, I am jumping now. And just like that, our log should be properly set up. We're gonna save all of our files here and we're going to go back and do some live compiling that is going to tell us that we did in fact not screw anything up too royally. So now what's gonna happen is I'm going to be able to hit play here and then there's our little bird, loud and proud. If I click into this to take control and I hit jump, well, nothing happens. We haven't programmed anything to happen, but we can go and we can take a look at this a little bit deeper. What we have to do now is we have to be able to reference our output log while things are happening. Now, the first thing I should say is if we do look, we can see in our log history that we do have our log temp here, which came through as a warning that says, hi, I'm jumping now, that reflects when I did hit my jump button. But for those of you that are a little bit of naysayers, I'm going to dock this in the layout so that it becomes more of a permanent fixture for me here. And then I'm going to hop back into play and then I'm going to take control and I'm going to jump. Hi, I'm jumping now. Hi, I'm jumping now. Hi, I'm jumping now. And that shows that connection that we've now taken our jump action and connected it 
to the code. So unfortunately with all that, our bird still doesn't do much. It just kind of sits there and tells us that we're hitting the jump button, but there's no actual jump going on. So let's address that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our content browser. We're gonna go into our blueprints folder and we're gonna open up our bird blueprint. Now, sometimes when you open up a blueprint, it looks like this and doesn't look quite right. Don't worry, just hit open full blueprint editor and it will open up the thing you're used to. So now we need to start enabling things to let physics and gravity actually take control of our blueprint. And to do that, we're gonna go into our capsule component because that's going to be our parent node and we want everything that happens to the capsule component to naturally happen to our base mesh. That is why we have it set up in this parent-child relationship. So since this is our parent, inside of our capsule component, we are going to go and we're going to enable a couple of different things. If we scroll through the details panel here, we'll eventually come across something for physics. And we wanna make sure that we're simulating physics because that's going to be important when we wanna actually add stuff for jumping. And then down below here, we're eventually going to find something called gravity, which we can now see is turned on already. So now when I compile and save this, I'll move this window out of the way, and then I'm going to hit play here. And now we can see our bird dramatically falls off the face of the earth, which is great. Now when we do end our play, we do see that we get this specific warning here that says that the capsule collider is set to simulate physics, but the collision enabled is incompatible. What does that mean? So when we go back into our blueprint here, we're gonna open up our capsule component and we're gonna look for collision. Now inside collision here, we can see that the character setup is set to overlap all dynamic. This isn't necessarily great because we don't want this thing to overlap everything. We want this thing to actually hit stuff. So we're gonna go and we're gonna check off that we do want this to generate hit events because we are going to be hitting things like pipes when we do bad stuff. And then we're also going to change this temporarily. We might come back and change this later, but we're going to go and we're gonna change this to block all dynamic. And now just like that, if we compile and save once more, I'll move this window out of the way. I'll close this weird debugging thing. And now I'm going to hit play once more. We can see we fall off the face of the earth, but this time when we come out, we don't get that terminal popping up said that we've made a bad. So now that physics and stuff is turned on, we have to actually go and add code that's going to tell our machine what to do when we jump. So here we are back inside of our jump function and we can see that we no longer wanna just say, hey, I'm jumping when we're jumping. That's not going to get our bird very far. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a bunch of different things here to tell us how we're going to jump. Now to start here, I'm going to go back into my header file and I'm going to create a new U property. The reason I wanna make a new U property is because I want to make this variable testable within our actual game. So to do that, I'm going to create this U property. And for the purposes of testing, I want this to be edit anywhere because I do wanna go in and I wanna be able to change this value so I can do testing a little bit easier than recompiling every single time I touch something. Now, just to stay consistent, I will give this a category to show that categories are fun and I'll just call this uh, jump components. And I basically want to make something that's going to dictate the strength of our jump that's going to be happening. Now, technically our jump is going to be happening in a 3D space. And whenever we want to input something within a 3D space, we're going to need to create something called an F vector. Now this F vector is going to be something called jump strength because I am not original with variable names. And we're going to set this jump vector to be equal to an F vector. And now we're going to have to give it what we want the strength to be. Now, how do we determine the strength? Well, there's three directions. And if I go back into our viewport here, I can help show off these three directions. If we look at our player start thing here and we go to translate it, we are going to have three different ways we can move it. We can move it on the X, Y, and Z. So when I go and I search through the details here, we can see that we have the transform available to us. So what happens here? When I move this green one, we can see that we are changing the Y. When I move the blue one, I can see that we're adjusting the Z. And when I move this red one, I can see we're adjusting the X. So with that said, we wanna make sure that we're jumping in the right direction here, and that direction is going to be up and down, or we want to adjust the Z axis. Back in a code, we can now properly give our new jump strength a vector that is going to make sense here. So we're gonna give it an X, Y, and Z value. So whenever we hit the jump button, we do not want to move in the X direction we do not want to move in the y direction, but we do want to move in the z direction. And I'm just gonna set this to something like, I don't know, 100.f. And the reason I'm putting .f is because that this specific f vector specifies that we need to have doubles or floats within for it to not 
get mad at us. So I'm just kind of saying, please don't get mad at me. It is actually a decimal number, I promise. So now we're gonna go back into our C++ file and we're going to change what happens when we jump. So now I'm gonna go and I'm going to change this and I'm going to take the component that is active with physics and that is our capsule comp. And I'm going to call a method called add impulse. Now within add impulse, we're gonna to need to give it some parameters here. Now, how do I know what I need to give add impulse? Well, we could go into the documentation, but there is something a little bit easier. If I go and I just have add impulse and I start adding my brackets, we can see here that it tells us we, what we need to give. We need to give an F vector. That's going to be the impulse that we're giving. We need to give a name for the bone name to which this is happening to. And we need to let us know if we're going to be changing the velocity at the same time. So we're gonna go and we're gonna put those in. Luckily, we've already created an F vector that's going to be the impulse, and that is going to be our jump strength variable. Now, we don't exactly have a specific bone in mind here, but luckily it does tell us what the default value should be if we don't want it to be anything in particular. So we're just going to pass that in and give it name.none. And then finally, we wanna know if we wanna set the velocity to be equal to this impulse. And usually it is good practice, at least in my experience, to put this to true, unless we are gonna be doing more complicated physics calculations after the fact. But for the sake of our game, since we're new and we do not know what that means, we're just gonna set it to true because that makes it look a lot smoother. So now I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm just going to save all of our files once more, and we're gonna go back into Unreal and we're gonna compile. So we got the go ahead from our compiler and now we're going to go and we're gonna hit play. And this is where things are gonna get a little intense because we're gonna have to get into our game and hit spacebar really fast to make sure that we are actually going to see an impulse. So let's give it a winger. So we could see that when I was slamming spacebar, it was slowing down the descent, but not necessarily doing anything besides that. So we're gonna be able to adjust this on the fly now. And that is why I revealed it to the blueprint. So now when we pull up our BP underscore bird one more time, we can see here that we have a bunch of different things. We did reveal our jump strength variable to the blueprint. So when I scroll to the top of my blueprint here, I can see that we created that category called jump components and we have our jump strength right here. So now what's gonna be fun is I don't have to recompile every single time that I want to test a different number here. So 100 definitely was not cutting it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a dramatic change and I'm gonna change it to like a thousand just to see if that's going to be the number that makes this game happy. So I'm gonna pull this over to the side down here just in case we need to continue to make adjustments, but I'm going to hit play and I'm gonna jump and we can see now that's a sizable jump. That's a little bit, maybe a little bit too high even. But no worries, I have this open and I can now exit out of that. And now I can take my blueprint one more time. I'll go back into myself here and let's let's cut this down a little bit. Let's see what happens if I go to 600 and I will compile save once more. I'll drag this back into the nether and then I will hit play, click. And now that feels like a lot more control that I'm giving to my player. This feels almost appropriate. I think I'm going to keep 600, but for your projects out there, feel free to use a different value if you want it to be more or less springy, depending on what's going on. 